Good morning tank commanders. In today's battle report we are going in for some armored action in Nuts, a World War II game by two hour war games. Before we begin, two things need to be mentioned. First, this report is most certainly not historically accurate. I am aware of that. My priority is to maximize the entertainment of the report, not focus on historical accuracy. Second, if you are unfamiliar with 2-hour war games, chain reaction system, I highly suggest that you check it out by yourself. Knowing the system can provide more entertainment, but it's not mandatory. As an introductory, I will only mention that this is a very interesting divergence from the standard I go, you go model. Namely, it allows units to react to changing battlefield conditions outside of their turn. The most widely used is the insight test. It is performed by tank commanders in this particular game as they come into line of sight of one another. Once that happens, both players roll the test and the person who has more successes or is the active side in case of a tie can act depending on how many successes they actually rolled. This means that, for example, an enemy unit can move in its turn, come in sight and despite it not being my turn, I could be able to activate and react first. If you are interested in knowing more about the chain reaction system, leave a comment below and I will prepare a separate video on that topic. With the necessary introductions out of the way, let's jump into the game. Winter 1942, somewhere on the Eastern Front. Late night with little starlight and intensive snowfall. Visibility reduced to 16 inches, which, thanks to interesting initiative rolls, is reduced to 12 inches before the actual fight begins. The two forces need to capture the remains of a burned down fire school. Each of the buildings has a limited structure strength, which means that if one side sees that its chances for victory are dwindling, they can start blasting at the buildings in order to level them and deny the victory to the enemy. The German forces consist of four machines, each crewed by a veteran crew, which means half of the crew know what they're doing and half, usually drivers and loaders, are green rookie replacements. The force is composed of a Stug 3 B, a Panzer 3 Auf F Bravour, Panzer 3 Auf J Pride and Panzer 3 Auf F Klappe. These forces will be under my command and are designated the defenders in this scenario. My opponent, Peter, will be commanding the Russian forces, which consists of six machines, three BT-7s and three T-34s, all crewed by regular crews, meaning there is probably a veteran tank commander and a bunch of rookies. For the purpose of this scenario, they will be the attacking side. In the cover of night and snow, both groups approach. Germans split into two groups, Bravour and Pride move in a line, while Stug and Klappe slip through the buildings. At the same time, one T-34 and a single BT-7 break off north, while the rest head east, splitting in two to meet the Germans. The assault begins with the Russian T-34 maneuvering through the dense woods and catching Klappe as it decided to ride a bit too far. Russians fail the inside test while Klappe has just enough luck to try a shot at minus one gunnery, so rolling on twos. Hans, the tank commander, gives the order and Jürgen fires a shell at the position where the Russian tank should have been if it did not stop dead in its tracks. The loader is having some difficulties with the round, so the gun is not ready to fire again. Seeing that shots were fired, the BD-7 drives up and can spot Klappe through the dense snow. Insight is rolled and again Russians fail to do anything. If Klappe's gun was properly loaded, it might have fired, but the occasion is lost. The second attack group rides north. The leading BT-7 speeds through a hill and tries to go through some light trees to pass unnoticed behind the buildings. Luck would have it that a small tree gets entangled into the tank tracks and forces the machine to move very slowly to handle the issue next turn. The T-34 follows its trail, using it as a safe travel path. Being a bigger machine, it's not quite able to reach the hill. The final T-34 takes up position behind some woods to cover the third forest opening. 
That action, all ways into the forest are covered with Soviet tanks, making the German assault much harder to carry out. Pride drives up at half speed and notices the BT-7 laying in ambush. Germans win the inside and open fire. The shot, although hastily aligned, connects with the turret, penetrates and blasts the Russian tank commander to Valhalla. The force of the explosion destroys the turret rotation mechanism, making it stuck in a forward-facing position. The driver panics, tries to turn the tank left and drive away, but in all the action forgets that there is a friendly tank in front of him and runs its side. Fortunately for the Russians, the collision ends with no major damage to any of their machines. Next, Klappe activates and reloads properly. It then turns a bit to face the T-34 with its frontal armor and again opens fire. The shot connects with the tank threads, ripping them apart, immobilizing the green monster. Klappe uses its activation to back off just a little bit to get out of range of the now immobilized tank. Bravour rides up behind the Pride and puts a bullet through the previously damaged BT-7. The projectile hits the turret, killing the loader and destroying the machine. Its loader has some hard issues with preparing the gun and as a result it is unoperational till next turn. The Stug moves a bit forward to try to finish off the immobilized T-34. Insight is rolled and the Stug wins. A shot is fired and hits the front armor but lands us off the heavy plate. Again, the loader fails to reload, which is a common theme. The T-34 responds in kindness, its turret swings at the stug and the round is fired. The round clanks off the armor, but it is more than enough to break the nerves of the crew which decide to pull back and run. Germans win the initiative and can activate first. Bravour moves forward and triggers an insight with the last fully operational tank. Insight is rolled and both parties score two successes. In our games, the active side wins tied as the Germans open fire. The shot is well aligned and connects with the armor, however, it only clanks. Russians respond by firing at Bravour. The shot also clanks, but the difference between the two tanks' armor and armament works to my disadvantage. Bravour's morale is tested and they decide to withdraw for now. After using Bravour as bait, the Pride rolls out for the kill. The Russian loader was unable to reload the main gun, so the machine is a sitting duck. Pride rides up and opens fire, scoring a hit which unfortunately bounces off the thick armor. This time, however, the difference in armament and the fact that they cannot open fire works to my advantage. The Russians are forced to fall back, effectively stopping the southern flank assault. Kloppe moves up to a better position to avoid any unexpected surprises from the northern attack group. The aforementioned groups move through the trees carving a path in the forest, setting up in formation in preparation of the next turn. The final activation for the turn is the Winter BT-7. It rushes forward with all of its speed, winning the inside test along the way, taking a hard turn at the end and firing almost point-blank into Klappe's side. The shot is deadly, penetrates the armor and explodes the ammunition reserves, making the turret pop up and fall back down. Fire consumes the wreckage as the entire crew is killed and the tank wrecked. A new round in which Germans win the initiative. Stug starts off by firing a round into the Winter BT-7. Although not perfectly aligned, the round penetrates the relatively thin turret armor and explodes, killing all inside, wrecking the machine. Loader failed to reload, so the commander orders a fallback to get out of potential enemy fire. On the southern flank, Pride backs up and rallies the panicked Bravour. Although no longer controlled by fear, Hans, the tank commander, orders the driver to fall back to gain a moment to regain their breath. 
The northern group separates. BD plows forward through the snow, maneuvering to avoid hard terrain, while the accompanying T-34, numbered 510, takes a hard right turn and takes up position behind the burning wreck, in preparation of a next turn ambush. The final T-44, the 102, charges forward at the Pride. Russians fail the inside, so Germans open fire, but fail to do any damage. The Russians retaliate, but miss completely. Both loaders struggle to reload, but for the first, and I think last, time in the game, the German loader actually does his job and reloads the gun. In a stroke of good fortune, the Russians win the initiatives, but are only able to activate tanks with commanders with a reputation of 5, meaning only the last BT-7 will be get to move this turn, before any of the German tanks activate. Using tremendous speed, it sprints around the building and tries to take a jump on the unprepared Stug. The gun commander, however, is prepared. Russians fail the inside completely, while the gun commander has two successes, just enough to maneuver his gun so that the enemy will have to take shots from the front, rather than from the side. Pride continues its duel with 102. This time, the round penetrates the hull and kills the radio operator, the least useful of the four-man crew. While not nearly wrecking, the hit is enough to break its driver's nerves. He loses control of the machine and it breaks down. The remaining crew abandons the tank. Using its remaining move, Pride backs up and changes facing, looking for new prey. Bravour sets up in cover to ambush any incoming machines. Last but not least, the stug loader signals the gun is ready. Aim and fire! Round penetrates the hull, killing the driver. That's more than enough to force the rest of the crew to bail out and run in panic. The Russians are now outnumbered 3 to 1. Once all my machines are activated, Peter can activate his remaining forces, meaning the last T-34. Since the stug moved away, it decides to charge south through the frozen pond. Unfortunately, the ice is too thin and the machine grinds to a halt. Until the start of the next turn, he is treated as immobilized. Despite the movement blunder, an inside is rolled with bravoure, and Russians win. They hastily align the turret, fire, and score a devastating hit on bravoure's turret. My tank commander is killed, however the rest of the crew stand their ground. Hans will be missed, but the need to eliminate the enemy is first. Bravour retaliates. Jürgen manages to hit the threads, but the low angle and intervening wall causes the round to bounce off without inflicting any significant damage. The streak of bad rolls continues and Germans can activate all their machines prior to the Russians. The hunt for the green T-34 begins. First, the Stug reloads and moves at full speed to catch the enemy from the rear. A round is fired, but it misses completely. If we can't finish it off stealthily, it's time to do it boldly. Pride moves up, sees the enemy. Its crew wins the inside test and opens fire. Another Fred hit, this time however a more significant one. Not enough to immobilize permanently, but enough to permanently reduce mobility. Miraculously, the loader manages to reload. The Russians respond in kindness and open fire, but the projectile misses completely. Their loader fails to reload. If we can't do it stealthily, and we can't do it boldly, then let's just do it. Bravour activates, aims and fires. They score a hit on the turret. It's not strong enough to penetrate or kill any of the crew, but the continued onslaught is more than they can handle. The driver wants to retreat, but since the tank is immobilized until the end of its next activation, its crew bails out and runs away. An unexpected victory to the German side. Despite being outnumbered and outgunned, they manage to wreck or bail five out of the six enemy units while losing only one of theirs and needing a replacement tank commander for bravoura. I hope you guys enjoyed this battle report, if you did, please remember to like, share and subscribe.